Hello friends, Marvin Schulz here, welcome back. I want to share a story with you about how I used to struggle majorly with self-confidence or self-love or self-compassion. So pretty much every activity that is usually very quickly recommended by others, like, hey, dude, just love yourself or hey, just be yourself. But for me, in practice, these things were really difficult. So I remember thinking back, my early teenage years, I had a few speech disorders. I used to stutter, like, dramatically, actually. Some of you who know me, I sometimes still do. I still sometimes get attention here. And uh, in some words, I still have this hardness, like this hard time to speak. I used to lisp, too, and I had a few other things going on at the same time. And... I wasn't thinking very highly about myself in general, so I thought that I was more, yeah, mostly unwanted. So when I talked to my dad and I asked my dad for help, he told me one of the best possible pieces of advice you can give to somebody in that situation, technically, which would be, hey, just believe in yourself, have trust in yourself or love yourself. Unfortunately, at that time, what could be, if understood correctly, one of the really best pieces of advice, really liberating <laughs> insight, for me, it didn't help. Because what happened, whenever I heard these things, I started thinking about, okay, I have to trust myself. And whenever I said that sentence, what got triggered then in my mind, what I activated were all the limiting pictures that I had about myself. So it just reinforced for me the very things that I wanted to get away from. When I said, hey, I should love myself more, then I just had all the pictures in my mind of, ooh, but that's not lovable, that's not lovable. So personally, the more I tried to trust myself, believe in myself, love myself, the more I actually enforced the opposite. So it kind of recreated the lack all the time, like a, a self-perpetuating mechanism. And I think that lasted for a pretty long time. And I imagine, I'm not fully sure where the turning point came. I think it was my time in South Africa, where for the first time ever I had a lot of like, relaxed time. I started meditating more. I started... Uh, listening to some so-called spiritual books. I, I learned about radical honesty 10 years ago. And then I realized that, I think I shared that in my last video about if you can be honest to yourself. So the thing that I realized that one day with this, uh, I got to love myself or improve myself was that I was sitting in front of the gym, ready to go in. And I did some journaling at that time, pretty much religiously. And again, for the hundred thousand times I wrote down how I should be so something like I need to improve myself but that day something clicked that was like the first little aha ooh, mm, that's what's going on I underlined actually with my pen if I've actually if I ever find that journal still I'm going to share the picture of it I imagine I might have it somewhere so I underlined the I and the myself in the sentence. And then I started thinking, well, that's a little bit odd, no? Because who is I and who is myself? And then I actually understood that these things are just thoughts. So that the concepts that I'm thinking about, they're not really who I am as a human being. They are static snapshots taken usually in moments where I didn't feel all that great. So my memory is pretty much recreating if I don't pay attention or like actively imagine good things, my attention would pull up the bad things. So trust myself, oh no, but that reason, that thing I did, I can't. But that day I actually understood that, hey, this I and myself, they are both kind of very limiting, narrow perspectives that just exist in the realm of language as ideas which is all right. I mean, I don't mind ideas, but they are not the full truth of a flesh and blood, alive, present human being. There's more than just these ideas about I need to improve or love myself. So that was the first time in my life that I actually gained some space from that, that I realized, well, maybe this is all just thinking. 
but I couldn't really go all the way with it. I didn't have a proper, yeah, what didn't I have? I think I was still too engaged in thinking and thinking that thinking is a very important activity. <laughs> so, and what then finally took me some years, how I really helped myself to uh, further that gap between me as the human being in the present moment and my thoughts was to actually practice telling the truth and to say more things that I normally wouldn't say to talk to some people that I felt estranged from to kind of test my mind's protection strategy of what's safe to say, what's good to say, am I really that bad of a person and to kind of put these things to test and practice and then I realized well if I do that actually the thoughts I'm having they're not all that important and then I realized over time that self-love or self-compassion or trusting yourself in practice is not to place your trust into an idea of yourself but into something greater and you don't have to be religious to believe this for me this was trusting in the moment yeah kind of trusting in my ability as a human being that i can cope with whatever happens in the moment so some call this the greater self i like to call it really have to develop my ability to deal with whatever life brings my way and that actual practice self-love is not an idea that is to be found by looking for it, but it's just awareness. So I imagine that the, the best, and I don't even want to put the label in there of like the best or worst, but a really good way of practicing self-love is to just notice, sit, observe, whatever there is to observe. Maybe there's a thought that tells you, well, you're not lovable, but there's no reason to engage with it or believe it or argue it even because that would just fuel the mechanism, right? So I think that self-love and practice is sitting and having the ability to notice whatever comes up, what I see in perception, what I hear, what thoughts come to me and my feelings and to not be pulled into everything that happens. And I'm not the world's greatest expert on this. I'm still getting caught up in my thinking. I'm sometimes still pulled into some ideas and then I catch myself arguing and though I have much more space <laughs> and, uh, for myself as a human being without being like so frantic than I had 10 years ago. So for me now if I think about my dad actually he did give me the best piece of advice by saying hey just believe in yourself but I just didn't know which self to believe in. So for me, it was always the reactive, repetitive story. Poor old Marvin. Oh my God, so bad. <laughs> Whereas in reality, say, hey, believe in yourself. Believe in your human nature that brought you here, that you are here, that others are here. And believe in that. Like in the thing that is present outside of the realm of thoughts for new action. So yeah, that's my take on trusting yourself or loving yourself that these have to go beyond the ego mind or the thinking and really have a faith in the greater biological context of you a living human being here with other beings on the same planet all right well that's all i have about this if you enjoy this video i would be happy if you subscribe to my channel for more similar videos goodbye